May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who calls us to seek justice and resist evil, to love and serve others, come, let us worship. Greetings, my name is Reverend Carlo Van Dellen, and this is Barhaven United Church. It's so wonderful that we're together. I've been on holidays the last two weeks, and it seems longer, so it is so wonderful that we heard together that I am back in the sanctuary and wishing all of you could be here as well. But we know we have faith and trust that very soon we will. So wherever you are, I hope you are safe. Um, I hope you are well fed and have a roof over your head. So let us worship on this day. Friends, I'd just like to begin by acknowledging that this week has been filled with sad and horrifying news. The news of 215 children being found in unmarked graves outside of a residential school in Camelopes, British Columbia. Our pain is raw, especially during this month, this month of June that is supposed to be about honoring and celebrating our indigenous brothers and sisters. But today we begin our three-week journey through Indigenous Month with a lament. A lament for all that was lost, all that is still unknown, and for all of the lost opportunities that this discovery brings to light. I also acknowledge that this news comes during a time when so many people have felt loss and change over this past year. We are already raw and tender, and this news cuts especially deep. Today we will hold a minute of silence and light a candle for all of the children lost and rediscovered. We will sit with our pain and know that we are not alone. Next week we move, we move into our turn, our response to our indigenous neighbors as we flesh out and explore the concept of all of my relations and ask the question why it might be important to acknowledge the territory on which we worship and serve. In week three, we round off our month with an exploration of what being a neighbor might mean with our indigenous neighbors. Friends, as we move through the month of June, may we explore together the importance of holding of balancing the need of grieving, but also the need to offer gratitude and celebration. Let us worship as a dispersed but faithful community of people wherever we may find ourselves. Let us live out the good news that sometimes we forget. May we know that in our joy and sadness, we are not alone. Let us light our candle of Christ. The light of Christ infuses the universe, all living things, all inanimate matter, all our relations are knitted together with the divine at their core. May our souls burn a little bit brighter when we realize that in our neighbor, God is present. May it be so with Christ's help. Amen. If you're following along at home, please join me in the call to worship. If you are carrying the stresses and strains of living in a complex world, if you feel at times like God has abandoned you, find the heartbeat of God in our gathering within divine mystery. If you are puzzled by the choices your neighbors or family members make, if you are wondering how to make your own choices with so many options, come and discover the voice of Christ speaking in our hearts of wholeness. Come to commune with God within us. 
God beyond us and God among us, reaching into restorative relationship with the Holy One in prayer. Powerful Spirit, who breathes us into freedom and insight, guide us on the way of Jesus, that we might find zeal for faithfulness. Inflame our trust in you, that we become proclaimers of good news and strengthen us for the challenge of your call and the price of loving. Amen. Friends, let, let us take this time for our opening prayer. Let us bow our heads or do whatever you need to do to come fully into this moment. Let us pray. In a world that is ever-changing, with the ground shifting under our feet, may you, ever-present one, give us peace. When the world gives us pain and anxiety, discomfort and questions, Holy One, give us courage. When our faith seems at times inadequate to give us answers for what is before us, in your grace and mercy give us patience and compassion. When fear and distrust muddle our vision and our hearts, give us trust in you, O God, and also in each other. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Good God, generous God, God the giver of all gifts, holy is your name. Today we assemble, some feeling buoyant, some sinking under the weight of life, some full of confidence, some insecure and hesitant, some joyous, others sad, but, but we are here. So we open ourselves to you. We wait to receive your word proclaimed for our lives today. We, we wait to meet in scripture and in community your good news for our lives. Amen. Our readings begin today with a reading from Psalm 138, and we are using verses from the New Revised Standard Version. I give you thanks, O God, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. 
You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for you have heard the words of, of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, and the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purposes for me. Your steadfast love, O God, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Our second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 13, and to chapter 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for, for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Our readings are rounded, rounded out with a reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. <clears throat> and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He is Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against its house against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, and his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mothers and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. For the truth that holds our living for the truth that challenges and changes us, for the truth that sets us free. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray. Gracious God, as we meditate on your wisdom, may our hearts be open to receive the message that you have for us as individuals, but also as a community. May our minds and souls be open to the urging of your spirit. In Christ's living name we pray. Amen. This week brought to light what many indigenous communities across Canada have been saying for years. The truth that at least 4,100 children 
have been identified by name, to have died while in the care of residential schools became a reality and hit home this week, when 215 burials were found this week in unmarked graves outside of a residential school in Camelopes, British Columbia. For some of us, the sheer number of children in unmarked graves drove home the reality of what life was like and is still like for many Indigenous people in our country. Indigenous children treated not as individuals, but instead left nameless, or treated as an unwanted expense when their bodies were not sent home to their families and communities where they could be mourned. Instead, they were treated like something disposable, like garbage. And I realize that that is hard to hear, but that is the ugly truth. This past week, I've heard many of you asking, how could this have happened? Or why isn't our government moving faster on adopting the recommendations set forth in, in the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People? How many children are there still out there? How could churches, our own United Church, be part of the res residential school system anyway, like in the beginning, in the first place? How could God allow this to happen? Well, for now, there are more questions than answers. For now, our grief is raw. It is fresh. But in that fresh grief, we, we are in solidarity with our Indigenous neighbors in their sorrow and in their pain. We are also one with God, for surely God weeps with us. The question of this past week, the questions of this past week brought up an experience I had a few years back when I was starting out in the ministry, when I was a very new minister at the time. So there's one particular event that I attended as the new minister amongst them. I was asked to provide a short worship service for a group of clergy from another denomination. I remember that it was June, and so I thought I would provide something based on Indigenous History Month. And in the service that I led, it asked those present to reflect on the hurt of the past and to think about how we might seek paths of reconciliation. And I remember when the service was over, one of the ministers came up to me and he said, I once taught in a residential school. They weren't all bad. They did some good. And I remember looking at this person, a person that I held with respect, being so earnest, but I was also struggling. I was struggling with how I, a much younger person than he, could even begin to try to, and explain the hurt far outweighed any good that they did. Now reflecting back, I, I often wonder if he was trying to save the narrative of his own participation in a system of oppression. I wonder if he was trying to talk himself out of any responsibility for the truths that were emerging about residential schools at the time. Or perhaps he, like so many other people, thought they knew better. That they knew better what someone else needed. I'll never know what he was thinking then, or even if his opinion has changed now that so many stories of abuse and neglect have come to light. But I think there is one thing that can guide us in all of our interactions going forward. And that's something that I've mentioned before, which is the Platinum Rule. And the Platinum Rule states that you treat others the way they wish to be treated. And when you think about it, so many hurts, so many hurts of the past have come down to good intentions. Many people probably doing what they thought was right based on their own beliefs about the world at that time. However, now more than ever, we now see that not everyone sees the world the way we do, the way I do, 
the way you do. A good life can be very different and be very and be defined differently by different people. What we value is not what others may value. And this insight can guide all of our interactions, whether it's with family, colleagues, partners, or even with our own children. We would do well to ask what another wanted before giving them what we think they need. All of humanity is interconnected. We are all family. What hurts one of us hurts all of us. And this idea of us all being family is something that Jesus touches on in our reading from Mark. In the reading, Jesus demonstrates a breaking open of what family means. That family is not based on blood or tribe, nation or community. Rather, it is bigger, more widely defined in its definition. And if it is defined bigger and wider, it means that who we think of, who we care about, is also broader and not narrowly defined. And so today, with the news and the readings before us, we sit in lament for lives lost, thoughts of what could have been, communities torn apart by good intentions for the other. And it is important to sit with those feelings, to not be tempted to push them aside, but to feel the pain. The feelings will not overwhelm us, but our feelings, our reactions to this horror is normal. To feel so deeply means that we haven't lost sight of what is important. It means that we are human that we feel when another is hurt. It would be far more terrifying if we felt nothing or thought that this was just something that happened in the past. Feeling the way that we do can help us reform our relationships with others. By acknowledging the pain, we can in time heal ourselves, our families, our communities, and even in time, our country. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians when he was in prison and wasting away and death was a real possibility, and yet he had faith that God was still at work in him and in the message of good news that he had. Even if this earthly life was over, he would be welcomed home and God would continue on working through those that heard his call. Now that is faith and that is trust. Paul had faith that even in the lament, God would bring about healing. Even when things looked gray and dark, God was with them, feeling the hurt, but also transforming it into something new, a new possibility. But we're not at the healing yet. First, we need to feel the emotions and know that you are not alone in your grief but you are upheld by your community and by God. Hold onto the belief that even in this, even regardless of what the future may hold, healing will come in time if we remember the past and commit to a future where all are valued, all are loved, and all are truly seen as a representation of the divine that we are all part of God's family. So friends, I invite you to observe with me a minute of silence for those newly discovered children in Kamloops. Their suffering is over. They have been cradled by the earth and the wind for these past decades, and their soul is part of the divine mystery that is all around us. Especially let us hold their families, their loved ones, who have carried their loss for so long families that have carried that trauma with them down through the generations. And we also pray for ourselves, that we may not be tempted to think that we know what is better for another. 
We are not alone, and we will remember. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. May it be so, and amen. On this God's Sabbath, on this day of remembering, of worship, and of gratitude, let us offer to God the things that, not just the things that we want broken open and God's Spirit to move through and to offer newness, but let us offer ourselves anew to God's mission in this world, whether it is through the church or perhaps you were living that mission out in various ways wherever you are today. So let's offer to God a part of ourselves for the building up of God's kingdom in this world. Let us pray. God, our creator, giver of all good and perfect gifts, we bring our praise for who you are, the one who is and was and is to come. You continue the work of creating, of giving, and forgiving, and we worship you for it all, embracing your grace and love. Help us in our journey to live the mystery of being born of water and spirit. Be patient with us as we learn to embrace your grace and extend it to others. We offer up to you all that we are, all that we have, and all that we are becoming. In the name of Christ, who gave it all for us. Amen. These three services in the month of June that mark the celebration and remembering and the reconciling work that we have to do with our Indigenous neighbours, these three services are, and the work of reconciliation is something that's really at the heart of what the Outreach Ministry is doing and has been doing for many years here at BUC. As many of you know, a, a very prominent member of that committee, but also of our church, our organist, passed away a few short weeks ago. She dedicated her life to many causes within the United Church of Canada, but one of them was certainly the reconciling work of building relationships between us and our Indigenous neighbours. So outreach, and I'm sure many other people too, 
would like to dedicate these three services in the memory of Sarah. And today, our communion bread is very special. It is a bread that she made so many times at Christmas time for people that she cared about in the community and here in the church. So today, we celebrate Sarah by one of the last things that she made. In the name of the one who said, I am the bread of life, I invite you to come and eat. In the name of the one who said, I am the true vine, I invite you to come and drink. In the name of the one who said, love one another as I have loved you, I invite you to the table of Jesus Christ. holy wisdom of our God, eternally offensive to our wisdom and compassionate towards our weakness. We praise you and give you thanks because you emptied yourself of power and entered our struggle, taking upon you our unprotected flesh. You opened wide your arms for us upon the cross, becoming scandal for our sake, that you might sanctify even the grave to be a bed of hope to your people. Therefore, with those who are made refugees in their own land, abandoned or betrayed by friends, whose bodies are violated or in pain, and those who have died alone, without dignity, comfort, or hope, and with all the company of saints who have carried you in their wounds, we join to praise you, saying, Holy, 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 vulnerable God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God, Hosanna, in the highest. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who before his suffering earnestly desired to eat with his companions the Passover of liberation, who on the night that he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming Christ's death until he comes again. In this communi communion, we restore to memory the hope, the broken and unremembered victims of tyranny and sin and we long for the bread of tomorrow, and we whine of the age to come. As God's people, called to love and to care for one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the whole human family and all the world, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church. Faithful God, you formed your church from the despised of the earth and showed them mercy, that they might proclaim your salvation to all. Strengthen us gathered virtually as your followers today that we might reflect your faithfulness, enduring all as we conform to the cross of Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace.
God of all embracing love, you sent the Savior and Reconciler, Christ Jesus, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Create in us the peace that only you can give and put down arrogance, pride, and anger that turns race against race, friend against friend, and neighbor against neighbor. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those whom we feel alienated from. O oh God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remind us constantly that your dream and hope for us is to replace domination with mutual friendship, replace fear with trust, and resentment with reconciliation, that all your children may live in the peace of Christ which passes all understanding. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who suffer. God of the cross, look with compassion on all who suffer. Support with your love all those who have been or who are homesick and lost. Those who feel estranged from their community or world. Those who suffer from shortages of food, necessities, love, and care. Those who feel unheard, those whose spirits are broken. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, you hear our prayers, even as creation groans in the labor of your shalom. We trust that you will answer our prayers with grace and fulfill your promise that all things work together for good for those who love you. In the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And we pray together with the saints of old and people around the world today as we join our voices and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come then, life-giving spirit of our God, Brood over these elements that through them they may make these bodily things one body with Christ, that we who are baptized into his death may walk in newness of life, that what is sown in dishonor may be raised in glory, and what is sown in weakness may be raised in power for the glorious liberation of all the children of God. Amen. Come, for all things are ready. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thanks be to God. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. And so let us eat and drink and be one with Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to seek ways of compassion and reconciliation with those that we live with in community. So, if there are people around you and worshiping with you, 
um, and only if they're in your bubble. Um, share the peace of Christ. In days of old, people used to kiss one another, so only, share, only do that if you have consent and if they're in your bubble. But if not, you can offer them the peace of Christ, but also the peace of Christ, the love of Christ, or the hope of Christ. So let us share, whether it is physically or virtually, with one another. Please join me in our closing prayer after communion. Eternal and gracious one, though we live in a world of need, here we have tasted your goodness and hungered for a world that is more just. Though afflicted by pain, brokenness, and division, here we've heard your call to be people of a healing community. Though daily we touch our limits, here we have received the treasure of your unfailing grace. Make us instruments of your peace, abiding in faith, in hope, and in love. Amen.
As we return to the world, know that God remembers you. God gathers and upholds you. And God sends you out into the world to find new ways of living out the gospel, the gospel message of respect, of compassion, and reconciliation. Whether in our joy or in our sorrow, God is with us, willing new life to come forth in every situation. We are not alone. We go forth with the blessing of the one who is known to us as our creator, our sustainer, and our glorious redeemer. And let the people say, Amen. Friends, be safe. If the week is getting a little bit rough, reach out to someone. Make a phone call, text, phone, Facebook message, whatever. Know that I am here, your church is here, and remember, you're not alone. We'll see you next week.